are now watching The Beach. After quite a drought of information, Nintendo hosted a Splatoon 3 Direct showcasing more of the game. Kinda hard to believe it releases in under a month. It's been one of the most anticipated Nintendo Switch games of the year. With that being said, there's been a lot of concern about the game, primarily due to Splatoon 3 looking way too similar to Splatoon 2, without seemingly much new to offer. So the question is, is Splatoon 3 a worthy sequel, or is it just Splatoon 2 and a half? I'm a fan of the Splatoon series. The original on the Wii U was unlike anything Nintendo had made before, and it was a breath of fresh air from the monotonous shooting genre. Despite being a Wii U game, it was very successful and the first new IP from Nintendo in a very long time to really take off. This of course led to sequels as well as crossovers with Mario Kart and of course Super Smash Bros. Looking at the sequel Splatoon 2, in retrospect, it was a safe sequel to the original Splatoon, but considering it's the second entry in the Splatoon series, which was relatively new at the time, I understand why. I've noticed secondary sequels either play it very safe, or end up being radically different than the first game. But it has been five years since Splatoon 2, and for the third iteration, it was fair to expect many new ideas, especially considering that 2 and 3 are on the same console. The main standout of Splatoon 3 is the overall theming. It takes place in a new location, Splatlands, rather than Agopolis. It goes for a sort of post-apocalyptic theme, and it looks pretty cool. Though I do wish they would take it a little bit further. The colorful ink really pops out in these rundown looking stages, and I've also noticed the environments in general are more detailed than the ones in Splatoon 2. Sometimes a bit over detailed, but the game overall visually looks great. The more realistic style isn't for everyone, but as a fan of Super Smash Bros. Brawl's realistic art style, I like what I'm seeing here. The gameplay itself, at its core, seems to be what Splatoon has always been, but more refined. You have new classes of weapons such as the Tri-Stringers and the cleverly titled Splatanas, and it appears it will have most of the weapons from the first two games. There are also Tri-Splatfests, which I'm interested to see how they'll play out. And there's also a decent selection of stages at launch, with there being 12 in total. Even though some are returning, it's still a pretty good amount. I also think a lot of the new characters are pretty cool. Big Man, of course, being my favorite. Now, Big Man, if you really want to take the role of gaming's best manta ray, do me a favor and take out Sunshine's Phantom Manta, thank you very much. And I'm glad to see that amiibos are still a thing. I was very excited to see this. I thought they'd wrap up after the final Smash Amiibos, but they're seemingly here to stay. And the Splatoon 3 Amiibos look fantastic too. In terms of the game itself, it definitely looks polished and is probably going to be fun to play. But as a sequel, most of the modes are the same but with some improvements. The main criticism I have with Splatoon 3 is that it doesn't have any new modes that really stand out. And no, I don't consider that table turf card game thing a game changer. The mode Splatoon 3 really needs is such an obvious but an excellent mode that could really make it stay fresh. In a world of Battle Royale games, how on earth does Splatoon 3 not have a Battle Royale mode? Having this big open battleground where you aim to be the last man standing by shooting ink at opponents and using it to move around the area, that would be really cool to see. And it especially would make sense with the entire post-apocalyptic theming. If Splatoon 3 went for a mode structured similarly to a game like Fortnite or PUBG, I think that would have been very cool to see. I've seen some against the idea because there are too many Battle Royale games, or my personal favorite, Fortnite is so cringe, hee hee bad game. And you can feel however you want about Fortnite, but there's a reason why it's popular. A Battle Royale mode is a great thing to have. If an idea is good, it's only logical for other games to follow suit and expand on the concept. The concept of Mario Kart is so great, that it's hard to find a kart racer that doesn't take at least some inspiration from it. If Splatoon 3 had a Battle Royale mode in addition to what is here, what is there to lose? The lack of new modes is the main concern I have with Splatoon 3, but during the Direct, one thing caught me off guard, and I'm not talking about the dab. The thing that caught me off guard was the announcement that free updates will be added. What Nintendo will do is release an unfinished game and finish it later- Yeah, I'm not doing free update RAN 117. Here's the thing, in Splatoon 3's case, it makes sense to have the updates as the game is centered around the service model, and as seen with the Direct, it's launching as a full game. 
adding additional weapons, stages, and accessories in Splatoon 3 is not the same thing as launching something like Nintendo Switch Sports without the pack and accessory being fully functional day one. No problem there whatsoever, but if that's the case, what exactly was so concerning? During the segment covering Sheldon's shop, it turns out you'll use a different type of currency called Sheldon licenses to purchase new weapons. You achieve them by leveling up your character and weapons, but by spending more of them, you can actually get new weapons above your level. Instead of using in-game currency for purchases, you'll need these Sheldon licenses. Obtain them by leveling up through battles and by consistently using the same weapons. One Sheldon license can be exchanged for one weapon that corresponds to your level. Oh, and just between us, if you exchange more Sheldon licenses than normal, it appears he'll give you a weapon you like sooner than expected as a special reward. If Sheldon licenses are only obtained via gameplay, that's fine. But the more I thought about it, the more I was thinking, the phrase in-game currency being used, two types of currency, speeding up the process? It sounds eerily similar to how monetization is handled in mobile games. Using Mario Kart Tour for reference, you can buy a few items with the in-game coins, but the rubies are used to get most of the items. You can obtain rubies by playing the game, but you can also get them with real-world currency. You can also unlock cups faster with the quick tickets, though for some reason you can't purchase those up front. Now to be fair, Mario Kart Tour is a mobile game, and Nintendo has not implemented microtransactions into their Switch games, but I've noticed a peculiar trend with some of Nintendo's recent games that definitely had me wondering, could they be planning some sort of microtransaction service that spans across multiple games? Mario Strikers Battle League's unlockables are structured in a way where you'll need coins to get them. You'll need 400 coins for a full set of gear, and considering how brutally difficult Galactic Mode is, it can take a very long time to unlock everything, and you pretty much need to grind. And Nintendo Switch Sports has this weird system that requires you to grind for unlockables, because what you get is completely randomized. These are structures similar to mobile games, and to speed up the process of unlocking items, that's where the in-game currency stuff such as the Rubies and Mario Kart Tour would come into play. Do I think Nintendo is going to add microtransactions to their Switch games? No. But I can't help but think something is a little bit fishy with this trend I've noticed, and I definitely wanted to bring it up. As of now, I don't think this is anything to be concerned about, but I will be keeping my eye out. But hey, on the bright side, if Nintendo ever does include microtransactions, I'm looking forward to seeing absolutely insane statements like this. But in the meantime, Splatoon 3 doesn't look fine. It just looks good. At best, Splatoon 3 will be more refined and have more new ideas than I expected. And at worst, it'll be too similar to Splatoon 2. But the content is here, the gameplay is here, and I will be doing a review of the game at some point next month, or in October. And on a final note, what is up with the pacing of some of these Nintendo Directs? It was half an hour long, but a lot of it just went over basic features. In the Splatoon 3 game, you can shoot ink and turn into a squid! A squid is a cephalopod. Get ready for Splatoon 3 launching September 9th on the Nintendo Switch family of video game consoles. Well, that's something we didn't know. Really gives me vibes from that E3 2018 presentation from Nintendo, where they spent half an hour talking about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, with most of it being stuff like, You'll notice that he and other fighters have expressive new facial animations. Not to mention the announcer lady for that direct was so damn cheesy that it's hilarious. One of the new King Salmonids! Unbelievable! It looks like they'll occasionally appear just before you complete the job. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and keep calm and da-da on.